I choose football because my brothers push me because they are the two most important players right now to me. As a, as a young brother, I hope that I can follow them in their footsteps and become as good as them, or even better. But this season, we hope that we can bring back the title. And as captain, I would love to bring back the title for my brother and for the school and for the principal. I motivate myself by always saying, work hard and to keep pushing yourself to be the best you can and to never give up in any situation. And this season, we hope that we can bring back the title. And as captain, I would love to bring back the title for my brother and for the school and for the principal. But this year is just to work hard as a team, communicate more as a team and enjoy yourself. And mentally, I say that everything, everything that we do in training is for a purpose. And I also tell the players that and that with great work comes success. So just never give up and keep striding. In the next two to three years, I would love to be in university with my brother as well and just continue playing football until I get the good opportunity to play that pro club. Um, from a young age, my mother brought me into football, so I've been playing football for about 13 years to, to date. Every day I see my mom putting in all the effort, time, sacrifice, blood, sweat. It motivates me a lot on the field, even in my class, schoolwork, everything I do, I do it for. I take my mom's advice and always put schoolwork first. On my off time, I try to maintain hours in class, hours in lessons, and always on the field. Well, I wish that I either play for a football club or attend a university in the United States or in Europe. No matter what you do, never give up. Yeah, you just heard there from the captain of Presentation College, San Fernando, uh, Barkley, and uh, midfielder Clement. Unfortunately for them, they are out of contention for the Trinidad and Tobago Secondary Schools Football League title as they uh, sit sixth on 25 points, nine points behind the leaders. Fatima College, Fatima Steamroll, Trinity East 4-0 in round 13 to maintain their five-point lead atop the standings. Uh, let's check in now on some other results of the round. QRC beaten 4-1 by Naparima College. St. Anthony's College beaten 1-0 by presentation. San Fernando, Fatima 4-0 over Trinity East, as we said. Chaguanas North and Speyside 1-1. Arima North 4-0 over Bishops High. St. Benedict's 8-0 over Pleasantville Secondary. Malik Secondary 5-1 over East Mukarapu. And San Juan North, they were 4-1 winners over St. Mary's College. Our resident football analyst Brent Sancho has been covering the league and he joins us now. Brent, one more win for Fatima and they will have their first ever SSFL uh, title in, in Division One. And I guess that would make two of uh, Trinidad and Tobago's biggest sports stars who are former Fatima College students, Brian Lara and Atto Bolden, happy. Yeah, and I might throw in Alan Roberts as well because he's at every single game. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you, you succeeded him as sports minister, didn't you? Yeah, I succeeded with sports minister, but yeah. I, I went to Trinity College in Malik, and uh, we, we've not done too well. Obviously, Malik is starting to pick up, but yes. look, I, you can't blame Fatima because what they've done, their body of work throughout the season, certainly deserves them the, the title. They, they've been consistent in what they do. They've stuck to that to map that they've drawn out from the beginning of the season, that blueprint. They've not wavered from it. Yes, they've had some bumps in the road, uh, minor ones. Of course, one loss against Presentation College and a draw as well uh, throughout the season. But by and, by and large, what they've been able to do is be consistent. There's no star players. It's just a hardworking team that grasps well for each other and, and understands their role and function. And they've been very good at that throughout the season, despite the fact there's been some very good teams that uh, challenge them through, through in and throughout. But they're able to get the right results every every Wednesday and Saturday. And that's why they're top of the table. And that's why they're playing uh, a game on Saturday that possibly may see them crown champions. Yeah, and what would have taken them so long for this particular title? Because it's a school with, with good sports history overall. I think that the, I think the time because of other schools really. I think that when you looked at the Shiva boys dynasty that they had, uh, you look back at Naparima College on, under Angus Eve, uh, and you look at those sorts of schools. It was always going to be difficult for for Fatima College. They've always produced good teams. Yes, being consistent. Yes, but I think those other teams were, were what I would consider large super teams, and uh, they've now come into this year's uh, edition of the SSFL. Again, consistency, but what we don't have this season necessarily is a super team. San will not let the table for most of the season. 
but they were they were a team that did not have the depth. And once they started to pick up injuries, so the results started to drop. And we saw that Naparima College was not consistent as they should have been because they do have a good cadre of players. They as well struggle as well. So for Fatima College, you have to give them credit. They have not taken the foot off the pedal once so far this season. They've been able to be uh, true and by and by out the best team we've seen uh, football-wise. And that's the reason why, as I said, they, they have this opportunity uh, that has been afforded to them. Yeah, Brent, interestingly, so I think the quality of schoolboy football in Jamaica, for example, this season, um, last season, well, let me just say since COVID, is definitely not as good as it was in the years leading up to COVID. What is the overall quality of the SSFL like this season, you would say? I, I would say it's a, it's a drop off in, in quality from an individual perspective. They, they were a lot better individual players last season and, and seasons before. Uh, I think this season you don't really see uh, that big production of individuals, flair and talent that you normally see in schoolboy football. Uh, there are one or two players who have really captured the eye and, and the imagination. You have Kwashi and Sween from, from San Juan North, uh, for, for, of course, Fatima College. Uh, they have uh, the, the young player at the, at the back, Williams, Jaden Williams. But in terms of that that overwhelming, uh, river-bursting talent that we normally see, individual talent, we haven't seen that this, this year. Uh, but from a, a team perspective, we've seen some good team football. Arima North Secondary is well coached, well oil machine. Trinity Colleges have done well as a unit. Uh, they did have the fluctuation results. Malik Secondary, uh, again, another team that's been... Uh, looking quite solid in, in what they do. Uh, so from that perspective, yes, it's a bit better. But from the individual perspective, I think it's dropped a bit. Yeah, given that you say that the quality individually has dropped, but you still have um, quality teams, good team football, what is that saying about the quality of the coaching at the high school level? I, I think that the high school level coaching is, 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 is quite good. It's a quite good a number of young coaches that now uh, coach in the league that could, of course, relate to the the, the, the young players. Uh, I did mention, of course, Arima Nord, Naparima College with Travis Marine, a former captain uh, at youth level and senior team level for Trinidad and Tobago. He's ably assisted by Anthony Sherwood, another stalwart in football in Trinidad and Tobago, and they've been able to impart their knowledge uh, onto their team. Of course, Fatima College, coached by Hudson Charles, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, have a list of players in and around St. Mary's College, has Kona Hislop, brother of Shaka Hislop around. So I think from a coaching perspective, there's some good minds, some good uh, individuals that understand the game and can pass that knowledge onto the players from a tactical team perspective. I think from an individual perspective, it's dropped off simply because I don't feel that these kids uh, play enough football. I think when the season's over last year uh, for the secondary school, not many of those kids went on to play football outside of that. And you can see it. And, and, and Ricardo, the players that did that, your Quashies that played in the, in the Premier League for Trinidad and Tobago, uh, of course, your Lyndall Sweeney that played in the, the TT Premier League, those players shown true because they played football throughout the year and they were able to obviously uh, keep their skill level, their talent level at a certain level. How do you, how do you get more players to play more football throughout the year and not just um, in the SSFL and once that's done, that's it? I think it's going to happen organically this season because I, I feel with the, the financial uh, struggles that some of the clubs have at the TT Premier League level, they're going to have to rely on young players. They're going to have to blend young talent. And I think once that starts to happen, the players that are coming out that still is in school, that still... Uh, have a year or two years left in school football, I think they're the ones that are going to shine through. Uh, so I do feel from an organic perspective, that's what's going to happen. Uh, before, Ricardo, in Trinidad and Tobago, we had the Flow Youth Pro League. We had all these different uh, competitions that took place in the months of January, February, March, April. We don't have that anymore here in, in, on the island. So players go missing for that period of time. And as you know, whether it's an academy footballer uh, in, in world football, anywhere around the world, they play football day in, day out, 365 days a year. And that's very important for growth and development of a young player. Yeah, what about the lower age group 
high school competitions, Brent? I mean, uh, let's take, for example, in Jamaica, where you have U14, U16s, and then you matriculate into the under-19 or under-20 competition, um, which is the Manning and Costa Cup here, the SSFL um, Division One there. Um, but what about the lower age group competitions? Well, that's still dominated by the teams that you see at the top half of the table. In, in South Trinidad, it's in Benedict's and Naparima College dominate at the U14 and U16 level. Fatima College has won the national title in all youth age groups last season, uh, which tells you the type of, of work that they're doing structurally uh, from an organizational level and the ability to tune and develop players uh, to move up through the different age group categories. Uh, and in the East, it's the same and normal uh, culprits that you see at the league. So the, the teams that are at the top have been doing well because they have very good youth programs bringing them up. And I must say, Ricardo, this, the league in Trinidad here has really gone down to the have and the have-nots. And I say that to say that the, the programs that are doing well have one thing in common, and they have a very vibrant old boys association, a very vibrant alumni association that's heavily involved in the sporting side of things. And because of that, they're able to get the necessary resources to continue doing well uh, season after season after season. It's unfortunate because you can see the teams at the lower down struggle because they don't have that vibrancy at the alumni level. But the teams that are doing very well have that in common. Yeah. Just in 20 seconds, uh, uh, Brent, because I heard you mention Hudson Charles just now, who is coaching Fatima College. He had played school football, didn't he, for... East Mukurapu, along with other big names like Angus Eve and Cornell Glenn. Um, somehow, I, I seem to remember them having a good start to the season, East Mukurapu, um, maybe the first two or three rounds. But they've just gone backwards. What's, what's gone wrong with them? Yeah, they've, they've fallen off a bit. I think defensively, they look a bit short in, in, in what they're trying to do. Uh, again, it goes back to resources. Coach Dale Saunders is, is an excellent coach. Uh, good youth coach, of course, a former national team player. He has a staff. But again, I go back to the fact lines, the resources. You can tell when you look at that te East Mokrapo team show up for games, they're lacking that staffing, that, that entirety that you need to, to have. They, they've had a couple injuries as well, Lance, uh, and they seem to be uh, dipping in form at the wrong time in the season. Of course, with the Coca-Cola Intercal to come up, which is a knockout phase of it to come, you just wonder if they can turn things around in time for that uh, start of that competition. Mm. Yeah. All right, Brent, we're going we're gonna to leave it there. Um, we'll keep in touch with uh, SSFL in the coming weeks as Fatima, Fatima close in on the title, and we look forward to talking to you on that again soon. All right, guys, have a great one. Okay, coming up after the break, we still talk football, youth football too, because the Mount Pleasant Football Academy in St. Anne in Jamaica doing great things, and we're going to hear a lot more about that after the break. <laughs>